Hosea chapter 14 O Israel return unto the Lord thy God 14 chapter history will tell you that Israel didn't return unto God Assyria will come take them captive and Israel North has not ever gotten right now they're not completely forgotten and, and wiped off the planet because of the 144,000 except for Dan and Ephraim the 144,000 all 12 are there and as far as Dan and Ephraim they're, they're either walls or the gates of New Jerusalem I forget which one or for the one for the tribes and one for the, the apostles. And some people say God's all finished with the Jew. He's not. For thou has has fallen by thy iniquity. That's the reason. And ain't God hates him? Ain't God's a big nasty guy and all that? It's the iniquity. You know, Jacob, I love Esau. I hate him. Well, why did God hate? Esau. He was in iniquity. He was in sin. He was in pride. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Yeah, come back. Return. Repent. Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So we will render the calves of our lips. Or say, you know what? If we return to the God we return back to the Lord, it would be so much better than any golden calf. If they would. And God's saying, give up the calves and come back to me. Asher, that's Assyria, shall not save us. They're going to come and they're going to take them captive. But that's not their answer. You know, when... Israel goes into captivity. Do you realize there's no Daniel praying? There's no Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo taking a stand? There's no Ezekiel in the, active, in the captivity? Because nobody, no king in Israel ever got right. And you see those calves, we follow to chapter 14. Those calves have been from the very foundation of Israel north since Rehoboam. You know how I many times it goes all the way through? The sins that Rehoboam caused Israel to sin. The sins of Rehoboam that caused Israel to sin. The sins of Rehoboam. Those are those calves. There's two of them. And oh, we lost the thing again. Keep on losing the feed. We're having problems with the internet here. Let's try it. One moment. So, with Hosea, they're not doing right. And there's two calves. One in Dan, which is We've already looked at, that's almost the, 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 the capital of the Roman Catholic Church long before the Roman Catholic Church. Remember that in the book of Judges. And the other one's down in, in Bathsheba, or Beersheba, not Bathsheba. There's two calves. You know, there's two golden calves in the church. Here we go again. You got Easter, and you got Christmas. The two times a year that everybody goes back to church. And Asher shall not save us. That's again, that's a Syria to go into captivity. We will not ride upon the horses. Neither shall we say any more to the work of our hands. That would be the idols. Ye are our gods. They're not going to say to those idols anymore, to the calves and to all the knick-knack patty wax and Asher's going to come and just wipe it all out. 
For indeed the fatherless find mercy. Fathers, if the fathers are gone, they're dead, they've been wiped out. Asher is not salvation. God is. They're going to give up their gods, but they're not going to God. And you know what's going to happen when they get into Assyria? They're going to pick up the Assyrian gods. Wouldn't it be funny when they get to Assyria... That they would find a whale god and honor the prophet Jonah. Well, we had this man come from the belly of a whale and we got his pictures and we got, you, you would think, and the whole entire nation got saved by Jonah's preaching. You know, everything starts off right, then it goes downhill. Your typical Baptist thinks, oh, you know, everything. Everything's terrible. Everything's going to get great because we're going to have that revival. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard that. was thunder. Guy was saying, yeah. I will heal their backsliding. That's going backwards. That's the second advent. I will love them freely. Nothing is going to pressure God. Oh, these are my people I love. He's going to give them a new heart. He's going to give them their spirit. He's going to write the laws in their heart. The law is coming back for the Jew. For my anger is turned away from him. That would be at the end of the tribulation period. That will be when Jesus Christ comes back. And he's going to, listen, he's going to trample some Jews. Some Jews are going to be enemies of Jews. They will side with the Antichrist. They will take the mark. But primary is the nation. We're coming back in the second advent to rescue Israel. And bring her back in, into the promised land. That's why in, in Acts chapter 7, it's not Joshua, it's Jesus that brings them in. And so even if you're King James and there are King James Bibles, it will say, Joshua, it's wrong. The devil's split. I will be as the dew unto Israel. And do his help with that morning moisture. He shall grow as the lily. And cast forth his roots as Lebanon. Now, see, you can't take that verse out of context. Oh, you know, I'll take Hosea 14, 5, and I'll put it up on the wall. Lilies don't have long roots. His branches shall spread. That's not a lily. His beauty shall be as the olive. Okay, now we're going from lily to the olive tree. We've gone from the lily of the valley, Jesus. Now we're going to the olive tree. Olives is a type. Olive oil is a type, or oil olive, that the Bible would say, is a type of the Holy Spirit. So here is the Holy Spirit working in the nation of Israel. Reaching out as the Holy Spirit today reaches out to the lost people and tries to bring them in through our preaching of the gospel, not to bite them to church. They may deal with their heart that they might believe on Jesus and he will indwell in them and then come forth with the adoption by the Father. This is the nation of Israel. Now, this is where Jesus told Nicodemus. The man, Israel, the new birth. And that new birth, I'm newly born, April, 20, April 24th, 1987, but there'll be a time that Israel, as a corporate body, will experience the new birth with the Holy Spirit doing the work as he does with a Christian. And his smell as Lebanon. Now, Lebanon is a 
is a fruitful area of known for its cedar tree, known for its plant life. And they dwell under the shadow, shall return, there's return. Well, uh, that's got to be said because Israel, Israel has never returned yet. Judah, but we're not talking about Judah. We're talking about Israel North. Now, Israel North has not returned. They will as Jesus. They shall revive, oh, oh there's revival, as the corn. Now, if you don't read your Bible, study your Bible, you just lost the context. You may have a per and I don't know what the perverted Bible, but they changed thing. If you got a perverted Bible, it, I mean a modern Bible, it may, it may, I don't know, I don't check. But Jesus said, set the corn, fall to the ground and die. <laughs> well, we got theology, we got the Holy Spirit, we got the corn. That's Jesus Christ. We've already had God already through this chapter. You got God the Father, you got the Holy Spirit, and you got Jesus reborning, regenerating the return of Israel north into a fruitful vine. And that in the millennium, there is no more curse, there's no more sweat. The curse is removed except for the snake. As a vine, okay. Now we're now we're talking about grapes, because it says the scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Well, Israel, according to Isaiah, according to Jesus, Israel's like it to a vineyard, where the Pharisees and the and the scribes and the and the priests have violated the vineyard and have murdered in the vineyard. Now, like I said, when I grew up as a little boy, right next door, there were there were sour grapes grown. And as a little boy, I was always outside, and, and me and my friend Kevin, we'd be sometimes we, we this later we'll, we'll look at the stars and we'll think about God, think about heaven. We did, and you would sit there sometimes, and I forget if it was spring or whatever, and it'd be times you're just sitting there. Or my parents' car, you know, we get into a car or loading it, whatever. We'd be in it, and you would smell that grapes. And I said that smell would draw you to, oh, I gotta have the grapes. And if you forgot and took the grapes or two and popped them in your mouth, then you're in, oh, man. Oh, you forgot to sour. But oh, they smell good. You ever been to the grocery store and you're in the produce section and they, they, they got maybe grapes or and there's all these grapes and you walk in. They even got that smell in the shelves. That's like into Israel. It makes the wine. And I guarantee in the millennium that wine ain't going to be intoxicating. Jesus made water into wine, but it wasn't intoxication. Think about that one for a while. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with these idols? Well, if Ephraim's in America, who the Mormons say they are, <laughs> oh boy, that great tabernacle, those things that are locked up behind you know, the bolts and all that, and all the, the, you know, the great building, the Mormon tabernacle choir, and all that other nonsense. But that's not Ephraim of the Bible. I'm talking about e Ephraim. The, oh, they've got gods right now. What is it? George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, uh, whatever Hamilton's first name is. Stock market. All, all the stocks they have. Maybe Chrysler, Chevy, GMC, Ford. The Blues, the Yankees, the, 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 the Alligators, the, 
Hoosers. No, we worship the Hoosiers. You're right back in the golden calf again. Really, you see all the time, you got these women, that they got these t-shirts, and it says Hoosiers. Lady, do you know what you're saying? You know what you're saying about your boobs and udders of a cow? You know why they put that advertising on the lady's front of her t-shirt? Because they know that's where men are going to look. I know some women, they'll, they'll have, they got writing on the on their pant butt. Yeah, it's, that didn't cost you anything. That's idolatry. Hey, look at me. I, listen, you think Catholics are the only ones got the idol. Baptists have got idol. Their church builder. Their pastor. Themselves. <laughs> I know some people say, Stolly, you idolize the King James Bible. Well, no, I don't. I'm just trying to tell you that's the Word of God. I mean, if I idolize the King James Bible, and I would show you my... Uh, I, if I thought the King James Bible was God, do you realize I'm marking God with a, with uh, pencils and markers? And You can't mark God. I'm marking my Bible. There are people, oh, we got to go Mickey Ratland. Last year, they had a great idol. It was toilet paper. Everybody had to go out and try to get toilet paper. We had the thing, these little stuffed animals. I don't know if I can say the name. I'm not going to say the name. And everybody was going out. They got to buy these little stuff in. They're going to make money off these stuff in. The problem is they made all these stuffed animals. Everybody's going out buying the stuffed animals. Now everybody's got the stuffed animal, and everybody's there's a, now there's no profit. You know, you get the magazine and this mint company. If you get these mint going, there's only 230 you're going to be. Well, if they sold the 230, that's not really. But the, but the advertising comes forward to make you idolize. They, I've been to, we got, this, we got this bookstore over here, Books of Billy. I don't know if I can say their name, but I'm going to. And I'll tell my daughter she can go find a couple books, and she's worthy to get a couple books. I'll, I'll look at the, you know, there's a magazine for everything. But I, I go in there, I can never hardly find Mad Magazine, but there's a, mag, there's a magazine for art, there's a magazine for Civil War, there's a magazine for the Kennedy family, there's a magazine for fishing, there's a magazine for boxing, for wrestling, and everything. That's idolatry. America will go so far, you know, I think it was Wednesday night, we've got to watch American Idol. <laughs> And you go to Baptist church and you don't realize you got American Idol, and there were people. Uh, we were in a we were in church. And be, well, we won't be here Wednesday night. Well, not because they got the finals on American Idol. We got to see who won. You're skipping out on prayer night, and then you get the preachers get up there. Well, we're going to have revival. They can't even come to church twice a year. That's not a revival. We read as a family every night. We play it separate church. We got the we have the Bible read to it, and then the, the king there. I, I forget his name. I'm good at forgetting name. But you know, you know what his revival was. He got rid of all the Sodomites. He got rid of all the idols. He got. He told his mother, "Get out of here and take your idols." And, and you got to destroy the Catholic Church and all the idolatry. You got to get rid of Easter. There he goes again. And you got to get rid of the Christmas. There he goes again. You got to say, hey, that's not pastors, not God. That's revival. Now, don't go far and say, well, Stalin said there's going to be no revival. A revival, I've had a revival in myself. I brought forth a, a revival from myself to my wife, Lisa. And we, we cleaned things up. We got rid of things. Before I met Lisa, uh, and it's funny, I tell her this story and she left. When I got saved a little bit after that, you know, I realized the records, I was, and I listened to 
Grateful Dead, and I listen to all the rock, even the hard rock music and all that. Kiss and and uh, 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 the uh, Monty Crew. That's the stuff I listen to. I grabbed all those records and I and I I didn't burn them. I sold them. I gave them away. I should have burned them, but I didn't. I didn't have nobody to tell me any better, but I got rid of it. And then when my wife and I got married, and God sent Lisa to clean me up much. I realized that the other night. And through Lisa and the Lord, I cleaned up my... And I started going to school, and Lisa was listening to classes with me and all that. And we... You know, Christmas is wrong. I didn't have to hog tie or anything. And... It's, and she, we, we had an artificial tree, and we had cats, and it was always funny. To, how many times we come home, that tree would be down. In the middle of the night, we hear the cats playing with the bulbs. Crack. And we'll get another. And I saw her dragging the, the, the artificial Christmas tree outside. I said, what are you doing, hon? She said, I'm getting rid of it. I said, why? I said, well, your class the other day, and, and the thing, and I, had, I wrote an essay about Christmas. Big, bad, styling. And we both together say, you know what? We're not doing Christmas no more. And you can find pictures where we had Christmas with my son Henry. And I didn't force that. She said, no, we're not doing it no more. How do you? I said, okay, we're not doing it no more. We didn't do Easter. We never did Halloween. But on Halloween, she would make tracks. She would go out and get candy. She would get tracks. She put them in little baggies. We sit there with a the porch light on. We wait for people to come around. Uh, uh, yeah, they go trick or treat. So we say, here's your trick, which is a treat. Here's your tr we say it. This is your trick, which is a treat. This is your trick, which is a treat. And we knew some cheaters. Where we lived. I mean, we were the last apartment on the end. And we get around. Oh, what is this? <laughs> oh, somebody broke into the candy. And we've got... She, she started it. And we would get gospel tracks out to little children. So when they, so on Halloween night, she would be, they would be nestled with their tummies all sore with candy corns and all that. Oh man, my tummy, mommy, I need some diarrhea medicine. Oh man, I need some Pepto Bismol. Uh, and what's this little cartoon track they gave me? Mommy, can you read this little cartoon part? What did they, they put in my basket? Ooh, you don't think the Lord did something with that? And then when, when, Tracy and I, when Tracy and I met, and she, she, I told her about Christmas and all that. I didn't know how to tie. It's wrong. I said, it's wrong. She said, okay. We won't do it. And then we, Chris, I mean, Chris, but, uh, Halloween came along. She made candy. I told her she put candy in the bag and she put gospel tracks in there. And me and my daughter, we go to the local mall. They had things for the store that was giving out candy. We sit there. We would get candy out too. And that went out. Uh, we were there for three years, and finally security caught on to us. We tried it a fourth year. We had to leave early. The fifth year, they finally said, get out of here. The sixth year, no, fourth, the fifth year, when we walked out, I dusted the, the, the dust off my shoes. We tried to do it one time when they had Santa Claus there, too. But we got away from We had a revival. We cleaned up our lives. Lisa, while she worked at Electric Boat, which built submarines and so did I, into a, I had a back injury. I didn't realize later, that, well, I did it within time. She met missionaries from Russia, from big nasty Russia. And we had one, we had one year with the Christmas. This is all, actually, you don't have to pay for it. She says, honey, she says, I want you to meet some of my, my, my co-workers. Because we were in a security place. She couldn't go where I work, and I couldn't go where she worked. And it's funny, because the blueprints I would use for my job, she handled. She was in charge of the blueprints. She said, you know, I go to work, and she goes, oh, did you touch my blueprints today? I said, no, I was waiting for, for the welders to come. I didn't do nothing today. <laughs> so she says, honey, they're having a Christmas party somewhere over here, and can we bring Henry? Everybody wants to meet Henry, and I want you to meet the people. I said, okay, yeah, we'll go. Nothing wrong with that. The fact is that Henry told Santa Claus, you're alive. And I met this, this guy that she knew. 
I forget his name. And listen, he was fat. Okay. He was big. And the only thing I remember is that he's wearing a t-shirt right with and that t-shirt was just loaded with with the with the, the fellowship track. I mean he had his shirt out to here with tracks. And he bent over and those tracks were falling the floor. And I know I've, I've had the tracks fall out. And I and I'm bending down picking them up. I said, I forget what his name was. I'm thinking of a Paul, but I think that's the one that went to Russia. I says, why put them in your pocket? They're, and I'm picking them up. I'm helping to pick up. They're going to fall out of your pocket. And we picked them all up, and he took one, and he says, here. I said, well, I'm saved. And I said, yeah, but he said, you know, when I drop these tracks and somebody helps me out, that gives me opportunity to give one to the person that helped me. I'm like, my mouth was on the ground. like, whoa, that was good. My wife knew Christians at work. My wife witnessed to people. This is the revival. It wasn't revival at the churches that we were at. We were at a carnal, carnival church that we left. And we went to the church where the pastor is the pastor. You can't do nothing unless the pastor gives you the permission. <laughs> and we tried to start a church. And he said, bye. Oh, I love your zeal, but you got to go. You didn't get permission from me. This is a guy that, you know, later on talked to his pastor friend, and later on he was ordained as a as a minister. And if you know who I'm talking about, oh well. You tell him I said that. A revival broke up and Lisa and I, and then and then Tracy and I, we had all kinds of ministries. Lisa got gospel tracks out. We're doing it again, but Lisa and I, we had where we mailed tracks out to people. I was involved in the prison ministry. And when I go to prison ministry, she liked music, hymns and all that. She was trying to learn the piano so she could play for our home church. We were going to have a home church. Tracy came up and she got interested in church history. And we had a place where Tracy was in charge of the gospel tracks of Chick and knew what got what Chick track to hand the people. That's a revival. But you know what a revival is for these church? Many people come in, and I can brag about to my preacher, but look at all the people can, and look how big the offering got. Send everybody out, come to church, come to church. I've never said anything. Many, many, many years to my dad, and I witnessed to him, and I told him about Jesus, and I told him about Jesus, and I said, you know what, we're having an evangelist. That guy is good enough. Dad, why don't you come to church? My dad had already been witness to. My dad had already been witness to. My dad's already been witness to. I said, maybe this, this guy, he's going to come. He's going to preach the truth. All right, dad, why don't you come? And then my dad was my dad was out bragging around, lost man. My son's a preacher. My son, hey, dad, you know what? At church, they're going to let me preach tonight. Why don't you come and hear me preach? And he brought my sister, and sister brought her friend. And they heard me preach, and they heard other preachers. But I told my, before I said, Dad, come to church, come to church. Dad, Jesus, Jesus, say That, my dad was the very first one I went to. The very next day after I got saved, I told my dad he was going to hell. That's a revival. Because a couple weeks before that, I wasn't telling my dad about hell. I'd come over and said, Dad, how you doing? He goes, hey, how you doing? What's in the bag? I said, we got some Budweiser. My dad's like, oh, cool. I'm sitting down having a beer with my son. Nice, cool. This is good. Gave me one of his tipperella. We're smoking cigars and drinking beer. Revival came out. I got saved. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Told the Catholic Church to go to hell. I went to my dad and said, Dad, you're going to hell. Revival is when you change. That's what the revival is. You got the new birth. You're growing. You, you put the sins away. And when you do sin, you're sorry for sinning. That's not going to happen in a great corporate way of the churches. Not when you got all are welcome. Read the cleaning of the kings of Judah where they went there and cleaned everything. One time they cleaned the temple out. They're you know they got the spick and span and all that. They're and then what's this? It's a book. 
Yeah, well, it's actually a scroll. Hand it to the priest. Oh, my Jehovah. What? That's the book of Moses. We got to bring this to the king. The king went over there. And, oh, he read it. Oh, the, uh, the, the Leviticus of Deuteronomy. I'll seven times curse you for your sins. If you don't repent, I'll get you seven times more for your sins. That case, said, oh, my God, we better, oh, my Jehovah, we better get right. We better clean everything up. You better, listen. And they started doing what God told them to do. They did what they told them to do. They got the right word. You ain't going to have revival with NIV, ESV, and ESPN and all that. It's not like ESPN is not the Bible. <laughs> How you caught that one? Because some pastors got the NIV and ESPN. And NASCAR. And the NBA. But they don't have the KJP. I'm not saying King James Version no more. After what I said yes Friday, it's a King James Bible. It's not a version. It wasn't a version to 1929. I learned something. Alright, we're getting back to revival. You want to know about revival? Let's talk about revival. Okay. I go to Ferdinand. Oh, okay. Verse 7. 14, 7. 7 plus 7 is 14 and 7. 7, 7, 7. And there's a revival. You know what happens at the seventh year of the tribulation period? There's a revival coming. That's when Jesus comes in. You're not going to have revival. Here he goes again. You're not going to have revival when Jesus Christ is standing outside the church knocking when Satan's inside the church. I heard a message the other day that Jesus knocking on... He ain't... I, I know we use... I mean, there's things we use, like the wages of sin is death. That's good for using, for witnessing, but that's talking to a Christian. Context. I know we use Jesus knocking on the door as a form of witnessing, but that's Jesus knocking on the Christian's door. That's the only time the church is mentioned as a building. He wants you Christians to come out. <coughs> Later on the book of <coughs> Revelation, excuse me, God's going to tell the Jews to come out of the world of Babylon. That's an interesting story where God tells you to come out. Tells the Jews to come out of Babylon. He tells the Christian to come out where Satan is. That's an interesting study right there. As corn. Jesus says, except for corn and wheat, both the ground and die. And then he talks about bearing fruit. That's Jesus Christ dying. You know what kind of fruit that Jesus got? And grow as a vine, there's a vineyard. And the scent shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Notice how he's not saying the wine of Israel. Because look where Israel's been for 14 chapters. The vineyard has been foiled. It has been spoiled. It's been tampered with. I'm trying to think. Deuteronomy said, their vine is not as our vine. Their vine is, the, is as the ass. That's the Roman Catholic. See, you got the wine of Jesus Christ and you got the wine of the Catholic Church. Though they say it's Jesus, and Paul says, or, there's another Jesus. There's another Je There's many other Jesuses in America. One church will say, Jesus came to North America. He did not. One will say Jesus is not God. Another one will say, you know, unless you have the, the, the tongues and be baptized of the Holy Spirit in fire. And another one will say, unless you eat the drink and the bod, literal body of Jesus. The other one, you know, unless you be healed. And what shall I do with the idol? There are tons of idols around us. 
If you want to see idols, and I don't know if I can say the name, but I'm not bragging on the company or anything, but maybe I can say it. Go to Walmart. <clears throat> and look at the e at the end caps. And the end caps is, you know, you got the aisles. On either side of that idol, there's something there that they're trying, ooh. And Walmart used to, they don't have it no more. They used to have something that they would have like a little video camera, video thing of a product. You know, it costs more money for for one of them is Twizzlers, we see. Right in the end cap, there's Twizzlers. It costs Twizzlers more money to be on that end cap than to be on the regular shelves. And you've got cereals and stuff like that. And you'll never see really a cheap product. It'd be the big, unless it's the store brand, which, you know, they don't have to pay themselves. But you look on the end cap to see, ooh. When a new movie comes out, you look at, ooh, what's being advertised in the paper for your children and for you. That's an idol. Mama, Mama, they got Rocky 100. We got to go see old Fart Rocky <laughs> fighting his wheelchair. <laughs> the doctor wants to give me an enema. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Then you gotta buy all the all the crap from the movie. That's an idol. I have heard him and observed him. That's God. You better watch out. You better not have. You think it's Santa Claus? No, it's God. Yeah, it's the Lord in every place. We own the evil and the good. God is watching you in your sin. You think you're hiding. You know, imagine a Christian cheating on his wife. Rendezvousing and all that. You know, he never does and all. God knows even more so if you're a Christian. You're his child. Me, I used to smoke. It was a long time. You know, I'd be at the bus stop. I'd be, I'd be, and I knew my my dad's boss. I'd be waiting home. And i see him go by. All right, I... Take the cigarettes out of my sock. I open up the cigarettes and start smoking. And one day, God held my boss up, and I didn't realize it. My boss was running late. And I lit up that cigarette, sitting there smoking. My boss drove by. He tooted. He never tooted before. I was like, oh, doo-doo. And yeah, that guy went and told my dad. My dad told my mom. Thank God. I didn't quit, but thank God. I am like a green fir tree. Dang ain't Christmas tree. The church has turned it to a Christmas tree. Oh, town and bob, oh, town and bob. We need to have a big bonfire. You gotta water it to keep it green. Oh, I, I had a pet. We don't we don't worship the Christmas tree. No, no, no. I says, how do you water it? Well, you're right down there. You see, we put the water down. I said, how do you get there? Well, we get down on our knees. Ha! Ah! And you said you don't worship it. You get down on your knees. I said, Mrs. Pastor. She goes, yeah. I said, what do you put in? We put the presents. I said, oh. And there were some down there. I said, oh, nice. There you see, how do you put the present down? Oh, you see, we bend over. Ah, we don't worship the tree. From me is thy fruit found. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am divine. He said, not to the church, not to the Christian. If you don't bear fruit, I'm going to catch, God's going to catch you up and cast you into an eternal fire. Run back to Hosea. There you go. And if you do bury, they're, they're Christian. Look how many people we saved. No, you didn't save nobody. If you save them, they're still going to hell. I've heard churches. We went out so Wednesday night, and Thursday night, or Tuesday night, and 
Three people we got saved. We we said had this prayer. So I was like, "What are you looking for?" I'm looking to see where they are. Because if you truly got saved, you're going to you're going to grow. You're going to. When I first got saved, I couldn't wait to go to church. Now that I'm in church, I'm growing in the Lord, and I, I'm I'm society the Bible like. Eh. You know what Ruckman says, if I would have known what Christians were like before I got saved, I'd never gotten saved. Amen to that. The way for the ways of the Lord are right. And when you tell hey pastor, I don't think we should be doing that. Right? Listen, we're gonna do I like it, we're gonna do it. I had a pastor's my way. And he he get up in the pulpit for, for some reason. They didn't know. Whatever it was, he say on that pulpit. If you don't want to do it my way, you go to my our treasurer, which is with my brother, and you say I want all my tithing. And if you're tithing, they record. You can get you all your money out, and you can leave. If you don't want to do it, it's my way or the road. He say that right on the pulpit. This church is all busted up today. I seen a picture of it a long time ago. It looked like a biker bar. You know who I'm talking about? Congratulations. How are you doing? You want me? I can say names, but I won't. Jesus did. Paul did. Peter did. Moses did. But the transgressors shall fall therein. That's an interesting word, fall. Because hell is down. The, the, the lake of fire is down. You don't stand in your sins. And if you are in sins and standing, you won't stand very long. Life is a vapor. Life is as wind. And we close the book of Hosea. God reach, God tells him, listen, repent. God tells him how to repent. And then he closes the book of Hosea. We close another book. And those that sin and those that don't do right, you're going to fall. America, you keep on going the way you're doing. I don't care what the preachers say. I don't care what the Christians say. I don't care what the Republicans say. You stay in your sin. You keep blaspheming God. You keep with your modern Bibles. You welcome and legalize sin. You're going for a fall and pride will help. That's the message. 